In this video, I'm going to talk about one of the best ways that you can improve your hit rate of your landscape photography shoots. It's got nothing to do with gear or technique. It all begins with the process. And I want to say a big thank you to MPB for sponsoring this video. Oh, just uh, on the Apple Cross Peninsula. It's flipping beautiful. And I just want to check out this view, potential photograph. I don't think the timing's right. I think the light's wrong, but uh, in about two or three hours, this could be spectacular. Spectacular would be a great way to describe the Apple Cross Peninsula, which sits on the mainland of the Highlands of Scotland, just opposite the Isle of Skye. So anyone can take an amazing photograph. If you're like put in front of a beautiful subject in perfect light, with a bit of mood and atmosphere, well, yeah, any, anyone could take a great photograph. It's like, uh, you know, when you're in an art gallery or a photography gallery and you see somebody look at a picture and say, I could have taken that. <laughs> and in fact, if you're guilty of saying that as a photographer, uh, well, well, the person in the photo gallery saying that they could have taken that photograph, well, it's not true because they didn't take that photograph because there's a process, a process to being in the position to take that photograph. So how do you get yourself off the sofa and away from the TV and out into the field and in front of those beautiful subjects and, and beautiful environments more regularly, more frequently, with more success. It's kind of what I'm going to talk about in today's video. This is amazing, by the way. But it's not really shootable now, but when the sun sets and if we get colour and those clouds stay as they are, it, oh, it could be phenomenal. So I am coming back to this spot in about two hours time. All right, onwards. So the best way that I think I've improved my photography over the years is realizing that it's not about the final image. How many of us are guilty of this? And I know I am personally. You have a free day or a free weekend, but you can't decide where to shoot. You start getting stressed and questioning everything and you start to believe that no matter where you go, you're not gonna get an image because the weather's gonna be rubbish, it's not gonna be right. You're looking for that very specific set of circumstances that's gonna pr produce a beautiful image. Like, you might be thinking, where's the mist most likely to form? Where is, whoa, where are we gonna get the best light? So on and so forth. Oh, flipping up, reversing up, this pass is not good. Yes, yeah, so you agonize over where to go and what to shoot. You check 20 different weather apps, you check the maps, you look at other photographers' work, and it just becomes stressful and become filled with self-doubt. And in the end, either you just go somewhere and you're unhappy because you've built up all these expectations and you've convinced yourself that the other place would have been better or you don't go out at all because perhaps the weather forecast says it's going to be windy and raining and the bed that you're in is far more comfortable and waking up at four in the morning packing your camera bag your batteries aren't even charged you've not formatted your sd cards it all just ah uh, and you don't go so if your main goal for going out with your camera is to get a five-star amazing image that's going to win the next photography competition, I think you're setting off on the wrong foot. But, you know, if you just enjoy being out there in the elements without the back of your mind thinking, must get a killer image because then you become frantic and that is never good. Okay. We're on GoPro mode because Oh man, I'm driving up this past the lights, beautiful. And I stopped to see if there was a landscape shot because the way the light is bouncing off the hills. And as I was looking at the landscape, this lone deer is just on the ridge. She's on the ridge and the light is on the deer. The light is on the foreground, but the background is dark, shadowy and foreboding. And it, oh, it's a beautiful shot. Man. So I've just come down, I've got the 100, 400 Z8, which is just perfect. But, uh, the battery gone. There, there. GoPro, go, 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 GoPro battery died. Oh, well, never mind. I got the shot. Anyway, oh, look at this, man. That was so, so good. I was so excited. Just trying the light, and then when I saw the deer, and the way the deer was, look, I don't know if you, can you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's what it's all about for me. I'm, I just, yeah, really, really happy with that. We'll, uh, we'll pop the image on screen now, and then we'll, we'll carry on up to our viewpoint, but, yeah, man, what a, <laughs> what a great, great encounter. Well, 
I am really happy with that image. But do you know what else I'm happy with? The service that I get from today's sponsor, which is MPB. Now, MPB is a place where you can buy, sell, and trade your used gear. So if you've got some old cameras just sitting around not being used, you can sell them directly to MPB. It's really straightforward. You go onto their website, input the details of the camera and the condition that it's in. They will then send you a quote. If you're happy with the quote, they'll send you a shipping label. You pack your gear up, ship it off to them, and they will pay you in no time at all. It really is faff free and of course they don't just buy gear, they sell used gear. So if you want a new used camera, then they are the place to go with hundreds of models in stock. And finally, you can just do a straight up trade, switching out your old camera for something slightly newer or perhaps the other way around. So if you want to buy, sell or trade your used gear, there is a link in the description below. We are just arriving at this viewpoint. Oh my God. The light looks incredible. <laughs> it really does. Oh, I'm excited for this. Oh, it's cold. It's cold. Oh. Oh, the luxury of having a van is I can take my tea with me. <laughs> Which is good. We're not going far. Hiking with the tea is perfectly acceptable. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, this is incredible, incredible. I kind of wish I had a view this way, which I don't really, because the light and the clouds over there, amazing. This way where I've decided to shoot is incredibly harsh. Ugh. But when the sun drops below the horizon, I think that's when it's going to be the time to shoot. That's incredible. <laughs> ah, what an evening, what an evening. Oh, this is beautiful. You can more or less see the composition just behind me there. Um, I'm gonna try it. I'd pretty much shoot it from now until the sun sets and get lots of variations. But typically I don't like shooting into a rising or a directly into the sun. Sorry, the sun setting, not rising. So the composition here is really straightforward. It's just, we've got the Isle of Skye over here, got this beautiful lock in front of it. I'm either gonna crop it down to a 16 by nine or a panoramic. And it's just about, you know, it's just about capturing the light and the colors. I've manually focused because although I'm quite confident this Nikon Z8 is capable of auto focusing, shooting straight into the sun, uh, I just don't like it. So I've got it manually just to double check my sharpness. And now we're just gonna shoot it. It's a bit windy, but I think I'm gonna try a longer exposure to soften everything down. We'll give that a go. Uh, this is what's so great about these magnetic filters is they just, it's just so convenient to just clip on. We'll go for a 10 stop, which is probably gonna be too much. We're gonna go for a 30 second exposure and uh, just see how that works. I'm worried with this wind that it might just be a disaster. But if I stand like this, <laughs> shield the lens, it could work. And also, I don't know how much of a difference 30 seconds is gonna make if there's that much movement in the clouds, but we'll see the sky is just on fire right now. It's absolutely beautiful. Let's have a look. Well, that 10 stop filter, it didn't do anything really. There's not enough movement within the scene for 30 seconds to have a dramatic effect. So it's not worth it. Well, that's the light gone now. Oh, this was really enjoyable. I have no idea if the images are gonna be that good. It could be that actually the sky and the whole scene was too messy because of the amount of cloud and the broken sky and the color, I really don't know, but it doesn't matter. And that's the point I'm trying to get across in this video. If you want to improve your photography, and this is gonna sound very counterintuitive and I'm kind of just, talking here I'm not, you know don't take take this with a grain of salt if you want to improve your photography start caring less about your images now the reason I'm making such a bold statement is because photography is it's not about the final image right there's so much that you can't control with photography the list is endless and that 
can create frustrations. And a frustrated photographer is not a happy photographer. And a photographer who's unhappy is most likely just gonna quit. He's gonna give up because they're not getting the reward. Now, yes, the reward is in the final image when those moments happen, like that deer back there, which I mostly failed to film. <laughs> but, but that was a reward, a spontaneous quick image. It was fantastic. But actually the main reward with your photography is this ex experience and things like this. It's being out, it's walking, it's the health benefits and the mental health benefits that it gives you and the exercise and the views and the, the ability to travel. I mean, you know, I, when I was younger, I never had the confidence to travel, but as soon as I got a camera in my hand, then I had purpose and I was able to travel and go and see random sites and walk up random hills and it didn't matter that there wasn't a reason because there actually was a reason and it was photography. Now if I focus too much on the final image and wake up in the morning and think, right, I really, really hope I get a killer sunrise, of course we have those thoughts always, but if that's the only thing you're thinking about, you're going to very quickly be a miserable photographer because you're not seeing everything else, all of the other benefits. and. Uh, and as I've mentioned a million times in this video, the process. Now for you, the process can be anything. For me, the process for me is driving in my van, going on road trips, finding places to park up, sleep, cooking dinner, putting myself in the best position to be able to react spontaneously to what the landscape is doing. I thoroughly, most of the time, now not all of the time, but most of the time, I thoroughly enjoy that process. I love going on walks and hiking in places I've never been to before. I love visiting places I've never been to before because I get that excitement of seeing somewhere for the first time with fresh eyes. The same goes for my YouTube channel. I have a process and I thoroughly enjoy the process. I have a landscape photography channel whereby it doesn't matter if a video doesn't have landscape images in it because for me, the process of making a YouTube video is not about going out telling people how to take images and then capturing an image myself. My process for my YouTube channel is telling the story. It's going on a journey. And with landscape photography always being the protagonist, the reason for going places, doesn't necessarily mean that images have to feature in a video. I am allowed to mess up, not get an image, get bad light, whatever. It doesn't matter because my process is storytelling, not necessarily education and image shooting. So if, whoa, <laughs> so if my landscape, I'm walking backwards because of the light. So you get light on my face. If the process of my landscape photography YouTube channel was only about going out and getting amazing images, I would very quickly stop uploading because the truth is when you go out, you don't always get amazing images. That's why I very much focus on the story. That's my process. So that's why I haven't burnt out and quit YouTube yet because there's always a story to tell.